What's up party peeps? My name is Roby D and in this video, we're gonna talk about some camera basics. So maybe you've had a camera for a long time and you're thinking, okay, I'm okay with the results, but they're just not great. I need to step it up a level and I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about and the first thing I wanna get you away from is the automatic modes of the camera. So there's a lot of modes in your camera. If you look at that top of the dial, you're gonna have a guy that looks like he's running, some mountains, maybe a picture of somebody that looks like a, just look like a face, that's portrait mode. We're not gonna use those modes. What we are gonna use is the other side where it says M, P, TV, and AV. Why do I use those modes so much? Well, because that gives me complete control over my camera and I know how to get the best results out of each one of those modes. So how do I get you out of green square? Green square. Everybody starts off there. You first pick up your camera. That's the mode that it comes on. If you're outside, maybe you're taking a picture of flowers when you first get your camera and you're thinking, okay, all right, I, I, man, this camera looks great. And then you go inside and the flash starts popping up and you go and you start taking pictures in other situations and it's coming out either too dark or too light or there's all these other things going on. There's a lot of things to know about your camera. Green square is the first thing that you wanna make sure that you get off of. That is complete automatic mode. It's gonna control your aperture, it's gonna control your shutter speed, it's gonna control your ISO, and it's gonna control the pop-up flash in your camera. What do those words mean? It, they, I understand that those words may be foreign to you, they may be crazy. When you start getting the hang of some of these terms, it's gonna help you out tremendously. Okay, so here's my old trusty 70D. I've had this camera for many, many years. And uh, actually I bought it brand new, probably like 2013, 2014 or so. Great camera, it serves me well, it does a lot of things great. So on this camera, you're gonna see that little green square, that green A. So when I grab this camera and I go to take a picture, what is it gonna do? I'm gonna go and act like I'm gonna take a picture and what's it gonna do? And it's gonna say, pop up the flash. Why does it do that? Your camera is saying it's way too dark in this room and I think that you need a flash. Green square, that's the mode that your camera's probably set to when you first pick it up out of the package and you've probably been shooting on that quite a bit. The good thing about green square is if you're in a dark room, it's gonna pop up a flash automatically for you, but it does that no matter what. I don't care how far the subject is, even if the flash isn't effective, it's still gonna pop up that flash and you're gonna have interesting looking pictures. Let's move over to P. P for program or some people say professional. I know professional photographers that shoot weddings and they actually use P mode all the time. So P is great as a walk around mode. If you're doing, maybe you're at an event, maybe you're on vacation, turn it to P and you're gonna be good indoors and outdoors for the most part. Now, what P our program does is it's gonna control your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO automatically. That's great because one thing it is not gonna do is control that flash. It's not gonna pop up your flash anymore. And for that reason alone, P is way better than automatic. Another reason that P is so great, or the reason I like P, is because you can actually influence your camera on if you want to overexpose the picture on purpose or underexpose the picture on purpose. That's gonna be in another video that we're gonna talk about right here, talking about exposure compensation. P. Great mode to start on. Go ahead, try it out. Um, if you have something that you wanna shoot today, turn it to P, walk around the neighborhood, just start taking pictures, and you're gonna see that P still gives you that confidence of being automatic and it controls everything, but at the same time, it's not going to pop up that flash when you go indoors. All right, next, let's talk about TV. On a Canon cameras, we call it TV or shutter priority. On Nikon and Sony's, they call it S, which makes a little more sense. Actually, that makes a lot more sense. And so, but on the Canon cameras, I don't care what Canon camera you have, if you have a TV mode, that means shutter. Shutter priority means that I'm gonna tell the camera how fast or slow I want the shutter to be. When do you wanna change your shutter speed? So some examples like this here, I'm taking pictures at night and I want to capture these tail lights of the cars. That's when I want my shutter speed to be very, very slow or in this other situation where you want the water to stop. You want to freeze motion. So when you're taking pictures of your kids, volleyball or football or baseball, you're going to tell the camera, hey, don't drop below one 
two hundredth of a second or maybe one five hundredth of a second. So just as a general rule of thumb, if you have enough light, two hundredth of a second or five hundredth of a second is going to stop the motion. It's going to do a really good job for you. Now, let's talk about AV. This is my favorite mode. This is a mode that I shoot in almost 90% of the time. We call it AV or aperture priority or the blurry mode. So this is how you control how much is going to be in focus or not. So if you want your background to be more blurry or less blurry, you can control that in this mode right here. A common misconception is the term depth of field. When people say that, they think you mean shallow depth of field. Sometimes maybe you don't want a shallow depth of field. Maybe you do want to see everything. For example, maybe you're at the Grand Canyon. I'm still probably going to be shooting aperture priority because I want to make sure that my depth of field is even wider. I want to make sure that I can see everything from the bush right next to me all the way down the canyon. Now, there is a little bit of confusion when you shoot AV on certain lenses, and we'll cover that in another video. This lens, for example, is a lens that may cause some confusion if you're shooting AV because right now when I'm at when I'm zoomed out at 18 millimeters, my aperture can get down to 3.5. That's a wider aperture. But when I zoom in to 135 on this lens, the lowest my aperture can get is 5.6. That's going to be a less shallow aperture. Now, I understand that may be confusing. We'll have another video that will discuss that specifically and why that matters and why I love certain lenses and tolerate other ones less. But that's just a basic primer on AV mode. This video isn't intended to go into depth into each one of the modes. In another video, I will break down how I use every single one of these modes and why it matters. So if you can go out and maybe give each of these modes a try and, and just play around with your camera a little bit, these other videos will make a lot more sense. Step one, get it off a green square. Let's try the modes P, TV, or S if you have another a Sony or a Nikon, and AV, or an A, or AV for aperture. And P, go out to the park. These are just gonna be pictures of your kid. Maybe you're, they're running around on a swing set. If you don't have a kid, maybe you're into cars, go to a car show. Wherever you are, you have a situation that you are just doing general walk around pictures. On TV uh, or shutter priority, this will be really good. If you have a kid, you can take them to the splash pad. You can take your shutter and let's make let's play with two settings. The first shutter setting, make the shutter really fast, maybe 500th of a second or 1 1,000th of a second. And then Let's do the opposite. Let's go all the way down to maybe a half a second. You're gonna to have to hold the camera really tight. So when you're gonna do a half a second, make sure you have the camera to your face. You're gonna have your arms in and try to be as steady as possible. Or if you have a tripod or a monopod, even better. And then play with some settings in between those two. Go maybe 1 30th of a second or 100th of a second and see what the different settings do on your camera. So you're gonna have a lot of fun playing with TV or shutter speed. Finally, let's go and take the aperture priority. If you have a camera like the Nifty 50, which I absolutely love, if you have a Canon M50, you can still get an adapter that will make this work, that speed booster. You can check my video here on if you need a speed booster. You get a speed booster for your Canon M50 and that 50 millimeter lens, and you're gonna have some really good results. So take that lens, Maybe this will be a lot of fun for around the house pictures. If you want those really cool, classic looking around the house pictures, throw on aperture priority, get a lens that opens up really wide, like the 50 millimeter or even the 22 millimeter for the M50 or for the M series. Turn it to 1.8 or 2.0 or whatever you can get to and just go and take some pictures of the kids around the house. If they're near a window, if they're maybe in the kitchen and get that aperture really, really low. You're gonna see that that shallow depth of field looks so amazing and you're gonna be very happy with the results. There are some downsides that shallow depth of field. We'll get into those in a video that we talk about aperture priority and depth of field, but go have fun, play with these settings and comment below what your results are. All right, I know that's a lot of information, but hopefully it made sense to you. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. I always reply. Go have fun, figure out your camera, play with it, and uh, 
Later, guys. God bless. <gasps> oh. All right, so I know I left the mode off the camera. M. All right, so manual mode is, I love it. I, I use it all the time. Um, any picture that you see that I'm taking with a strobe and it's gonna flash. If I'm doing senior photos or family portraits, if I'm shooting like a wedding and there's a big wedding party, I'll set up my two big lights. I'm gonna be in manual mode. Even when I'm shooting for my wife's bakery, oftentimes I'm using a strobe for these shots and I'm gonna be in manual mode. That's because I can control my aperture, my shutter speed, and my ISO. It's very necessary for me to shoot a manual if I'm using my older strobes. Now, I did buy a strobe recently that allows me to shoot an AV, and it's, it's cheating. It's so much fun, it's so amazing. I haven't really gotten a chance to try it out really, really yet, um, just a couple of test shoots, but it, it's like cheating. All that said, Manual mode, that's a whole different mode we'll have to jump into and there's a very specific reason why I use it, um, but we won't get into it into this video.